Yeah, sorry, Sandri. No worries. Um, but uh, so yes, yeah, so what I what I was telling that uh, that um, this is uh, this applies to basically any type of thing that you wanna present. Uh, and uh, from my personal background, being an entrepreneur for about ten years, uh, I've been work, working with uh, with games like Minecraft. So for example, the education version that maybe some of you use at school, Minecraft Education Edition, was something that me and my team started working on around two thousand and ten. And I've been now working in the academia for about uh, three to four years. Now, uh, when we were presenting our business idea uh, to potential customers, uh, to investors, whoever, or whatever idea I'm presenting today in the university today, I pretty much follow the same structure always. Uh, and really, uh, this is a very general structure. This is used worldwide uh, by, by professional uh, business people who are presenting their business ideas, business models, products, and, and so on. So uh, by all means, uh, that, or by no means, this is, uh, this is something that only applies for today's uh, uh, robotics competition, but something that hopefully is helpful for you whenever you decide to uh, uh, pitch your idea or present your idea to, to somebody. Uh, so, so, but, but of course, uh, we will look into the criteria and, uh, and how to present in our particular case as well. So there is that as well. So you know uh, what the structure uh, should be or the ideal structure and how much time uh, you have. And uh, particularly this structure that we are going to be discussing today uh, applies to short presentations. Like of course, if you have 60 minutes of time, like one hour of time to tell a, a, you know, somebody a story and, and a product and, and, and so on, uh, there's more more freedom, more conversation, uh, and it's more more sort of uh, relaxed and conversational. But let's say that you are given five minutes maximum, like in this our case, or maybe three minutes, which is much harder than five minutes. Uh, how do you then structure your presentation? And one really important thing is that uh, last year when we were having this com uh, this competition, there were really cool, great ideas, really cool ideas, really innovative ideas, similar to what happened this year. So there are a lot of really good ideas coming up in the finals. We would like to hear the full story and not the beginning. <laughs> and uh, and what happened last year was that quite a few teams had, you know, we had to basically stop them from speaking because they were going like so much over time. So the presentation maximum time for our next week's final is five minutes. And that's a very hard maximum because we have a very short limited time in, during the, the finals. And we need to, of course, hear from, from, from everybody. So we cannot basically allow you to present more than five to a maximum of five and a half minutes. So, so really let's make sure that when we present, however we do it, we do it in five minutes because we would like to hear everything that you have to say and not just like the beginning and then maybe something very important that would actually be very significant for the for the competition would not be heard so this is really really the key but let me uh, share my screen uh today's session might not take full two hours uh because uh a bit depending on on how many questions you might have uh but uh let's Let's start and let's see how long we wanna wanna go. So uh, let me open the chat also so I can see it. So if you have any any questions, please just uh, ask. Type into the chat at any time. <clears throat> so let's look into the basic structure first. Uh, so how to make a good presentation, and and really the key here is is this acronym. So NABC. I don't know if you have heard this acronym before. It means need, approach, benefits, and comparison or competition, depending on the context of it. This particular uh, structure of presentations is used from, you know, early startups, uh, you know, innovators who are telling their friend their new business idea the first time to the most professional uh, business people, uh, people who are pitching on the on presenting on the final stages and winning uh, big competitions when it comes to uh, 
like hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of startups and companies uh, competing and who are also grabbing the attention of uh, investors and getting, for example, their, their business ideas uh, funded. And, uh, and of course, there are other ways, other models to present. But why I really recommend you to start from NABC is that it is widely known, widely used, very effective. And also, if you go on a stage where everybody is using loosely NABC form in the presentation, uh, and we go into the details uh, soon, what everything means and how you, how you should do each part, uh, is that if, let's say, there's a listener who is very used to hearing the presentations of ideas in the NABC uh, format, that person might listen the first part and the second part, or maybe something else. And if you are using a different format, uh, then what might happen is that this, the, it, it confuses the, the audience and they might not pick the main points you wanna, you wanna say. So I really recommend that since uh, the sort of the scene of business people, innovators, really often using the NABC structure, that you start with this, you start using this at first, and then step by step, when you are professional presenter, professional pitcher, a pitch means like this rapid sort of idea presentation, then of course, feel free to take more freedom, flexibility, and when you know what you are doing. But if you are a novice, I would, I would recommend starting and sticking with this. And to be very honest with you, this has been serving me very well. And still, whenever, for example, I need to get something through in the university, some idea, I basically put it into an NABC form when I'm presenting it, whether that's one minute, uh, in, a, in a spoken way, or maybe I write a WhatsApp message to our principal and I explain that what should be what we need to get done, I write the WhatsApp message in an NABC form. So it's just like giving you the idea that, that people at, at any stage in life in business are using the same, same model. So let's move into details. Now, during next week's final. Uh, and this is really much related to how you should be sort of uh, structuring your space. Is that we have, we have five minutes for each team. So you have absolutely maximum five minutes. We expect you to present live. And also we expect you to demonstrate your robot live. So if we think about uh, how your camera may be or should be uh, positioned, and of course it can be a laptop, is that first maybe you can uh, share your presentation, go through the, the slides, or maybe you have a screen next to you and you are presenting here standing and just so the text is big enough, remember that we go into the, those details, but maybe you present here and then maybe you can turn your laptop or your camera, whatever you're using to show on a table, or on a floor where your robot is. And then we need to see that basically you put the robot on in some way, press the code running, uh, and we see the robot in action. Because that's the way for us to pr really prove that you have built your robots and you are in the same space with your robot. So it's not something like a video stream that comes from online and then uh, you are just claiming that the robot is yours. Well. We have seen your presentations already uh, that you have shared. You know they have been excellent. Uh, some of them have been quite long. Some of them, uh, uh, you know, would get would benefit from the structure. But I think that the setups that you have had already uh, are have been really good. But just remember that we need to see you basically holding or being next to your robot, basically putting it on. So we we we, we need to confirm that it is something that that you possess. And, and that's, that's the way for our, us to do a bit of a, uh, also guarantee that, that you have been involved with working on the robot. So five minutes live, so not a recording, you should present live and the robot should be live in the same space and we need, to, need you to, to be operating the robot. 
So uh, can you use PowerPoint? Absolutely, uh, you can. So whether you share your screen, maybe you have a, a screen next to you, what, whatever is possible to you, that's, that's, all, that's all good. All of those work. Uh, of, if you want to use a mirror board like I'm doing, that's fine as well. But something that I really, maybe some practical tip uh, about, uh, about presentation is that, first of all, uh, what you have in the slide should be very little, meaning that maybe you have some keywords, maybe you have uh, maybe a sentence or two sentences, or maybe two, three bullets. I would say maximum of three bullets. And then you, you, you speak out loud everything that you have on the, on the uh, PowerPoint slide. Now, why to do this? Let's say you have a wall of text uh, PowerPoint slide. We go into some of these details uh, a bit later, but let's say you have a massive uh, text wall on your PowerPoint slide. So the audience either tries to listen to you and then maybe gets a bit confused about trying to read at the same time. And then it's hard to focus on either you speaking or into the slide. Or, or if they start reading, then they are not listening to you. So really, I highly recommend that, uh, that whatever you have on the slide is either picture or something very little text. And every single text you have there, you speak out loud and step by step from top to bottom in, a, in an order. So basically, the, it is easier for the audience to listen to you speak. And now also, when we are not using our mother tongue, I mean, maybe some of you are native English speakers. Uh, I would assume most of you are not. Uh, you are just extre extre extremely good in speaking English, what I've heard from the videos. Also, I am not a, a native English speaker. So it is very helpful for us non-natives to have both text sort of citations and our, our voice both. That just helps the message go through. And of course, like uh, Johanna mentioned, we are recording this. So if there's some information that you feel like I'm going very fast, just you know, go back to the, the recording. But let's go into look into what the NABC structure is. Uh, do you have a hand up? Please uh, feel free to open your mic and ask. Can I ask that we can use presentation file like PowerPoint, share screen, and I have another account to record my presentation? You can use uh, PowerPoint, yes. Uh, and um, I would say that the two easiest ways to use PowerPoint, either you share your screen on Zoom, that's possible, or you have a separate screen where you are showing the presentation. Thanks, teacher. You're welcome. So now let's look into the three different, four different <laughs> NABC parts. Uh, now, I would say the first one, is the most important because of course here you catch the attention of the audience. Now humanity, us humans, uh, we have been telling stories for as long as we've had language. So it goes back, back thousands of years and before writing and before reading obviously, uh, the way our cultures, our tradition, our ideas and uh, creativity was passing from one generation to another was stories. And, and really, uh, I'm sure that, for example, in Vietnam and in the surrounding areas in Finland, you have some like folklore that goes thousands of years back uh, from stories of people that have lived here thousands of years ago. And the stories are still here with us today about maybe some mythical creatures or whether those were real or not, doesn't matter. The stories are there and they are part of sort of our sort of legacy and our genes and, and the culture and who we are. And this, I, 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 I bet that stories are something that is with language is very sort of genetic to us. And stories are something that we like to listen to we, we stop for a moment when we start hearing a story. Stories are interesting. We relate and we connect with stories. We can emphasize, we can build empathy 
to stories and people telling stories. So just like the story, when you are presenting something, may be the most important part. So I would say maybe a stereotypical, stereotypical way is that maybe like a, if you are an engineer, as that we Finns are quite often considered quite engineer uh, nation or people, we go straight to the solution. But when you go straight to the solution, people don't understand why your solution matters, how it is beneficial, how I could benefit from it. So the whole context of why the solution actually matters is missing. And the story is sort of the red, red line, the red thread, uh, that sort of glue that, first of all, makes your solution connect with the people who are, who are hearing about it. So the need really is uh, about the story of why your solution exists. So with the, with the need or with the problem, you are sort of framing the context where then your solution comes to help. So let's say today we are, we are, we are discussing uh, kitchen appliance robots mainly. So it might be that like, you know, after you come to, from work, uh, you, you have two kids, for example, you are a family person. Well, you need to start uh, making food. Well, what are your options? Start, you know, slicing potatoes and whatever you might be eating, or you call to a delivery service and you pay a high premium. Maybe you open the open the fridge. There's nothing, so you need to go to the store. And we have all been in this situation. So now I am framing the context of you standing at your house. The kids are just in. You need food for the kids, or you need food for yourself. And okay, I'm, I've been in that situation. I know what you are talking about. Okay, I'm interested, I'm, I'm, I'm listening. And then, okay, well, with, uh, with my robots, uh, and then you already go into the approach. Now, please try to describe what the problem is and what, the, what is the problem that you are solving. Like really framing the context so it picks my interest. I would say that from the five minutes, you should use maximum maybe five sentences or 30 seconds from your presentation to describe the problem. If your problem or, or you know, start building the story, if your problem is like really exciting, really cool, really important, you, know, you, might, you might spend more, but then remember that you have less time with the rest. But, but I think that this is really, when you climb on a stage, when you have your time to present this story or this need, framing the situation, the context, the problem is, is really, really the, 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 the key point to grab people's attention. So they really pay attention to what you want to tell them. And of course, let's say if you are a business person and you are pitching your own product idea, for example, or your business, of course, this is how you make people care about what you're about to say. If they don't care, then obviously they might not be interested in your business or about your product. So stories, very important. So now the next piece, and of course, please once more uh, ask, uh, ask questions if you might have. So the ap approach is maybe the easiest, but at the same time, maybe the hardest uh, part, because here you want to be able to, you need to be able to communicate your approach in basically one sentence, hopefully even less. Uh, and this is like after, after the person becoming interested because of your story, because the problem you are solving that the person connects with, then you give the solution. Bam. And maybe with my previous idea, let's say that we are all be in the situation where you come home or kids are crying or you are extremely hungry. You realize there is uh, no food in the fridge. You have options, go to the store or order something really expensive. What do you do? Well, that was 30 seconds. I bet a slightly less. Well, my solution is fridge robot that tells you what you have in the fridge when you leave at work and then you can stop at the, in, the, in the store before you pick your kids. 
well, maybe not the best idea. Uh, I, I, I did my best, but really what I tried to do is to, first of all, describe the context where all of us have been, being hungry, being slightly angry, and then you have a solution, fridge robot. Okay, that's one sent. That's one, one quick two words, and then a couple sentences to describe what it does for you. So this is sort of the punchline in a way, the approach that you are. You tell this story. I'm connecting with that, and then it's the punchline. Okay, my solution or our solution is, or please be introduced to Fritz Robot. Please ask any questions if you if you might have. But this is of course something that you want to have as simple as possible. So the person who were listening to you, just like if there's one thing that they re remember, is the empathy towards and the connection with your story, being there, standing, no food in the fridge, kids are crying, and then fridge robot. Maybe the two things that they might remember. Maybe all the remaining they don't remember. Most likely they don't remember. But they have picked up two things from your presentation. And two things, believe me or not, is a really good number of things that you can st get, get sticky with somebody. Uh, let's say if, if somebody is just giving a presentation um, on a stage anywhere in the world today, they are lucky if there is one thing that people remember from their presentation, let's say a week from their presentation. And if you look into, uh, for example, most likely like a, mostly like an American uh, literature, uh, and this is by no means a criticism towards uh, uh, sort of American, like let's say more like a fact or self-help or some other uh, other literature, but but really many times uh, like those books are one idea. It's like one idea that is described in the first chapter. It might be like a one sentence idea. Uh, and then the remaining book, maybe 200 pages, 300 pages, is just to give examples and deepen the first idea. And really, the main point of the book is to get that one idea stick with you. So you can actually understand it very well and use it in your life. So one thing, if they remember Fritz Robot, it's already big thing, if they also connect with the situation where you said that Fritz Robot is helpful, that's two things and that's already a big number. I would claim that maybe the best presenters in the world can get maybe maximum of three things that people can remember. I don't know if you agree with me, but uh, at least uh, from my own experience, that's, that's, I would say that's theoretical max of how much a person can remember from one uh, presentation. But all right, so now the person is interested. Now the person knows my solution. So what's next? Of course, I need to make the person understand the benefits. So now, now we are already, person is interested, they know about Fritz Robot or whatever it might be. And now we go into the territory where it's more about uh, like giving more information that the person can make a decision. Uh, now I'm already connected. I know what we're talking about. Now, what is my decision? Do I wanna go forward with this or do I pass it? Maybe you are telling about a product. Like in, I would say that the robots that you have created in a way are products and they could be products. So now the person is interested, they want to hear more, and now you want to make them help to do a decision. Do I buy this or do I skip it? Maybe you are presenting to a investor or a bank or your friend or whoever. Uh, and, uh, and then now you are trying to convince them to help you or pass. And now, Quite often, uh, it is described in a way that, that you tell the person from two to three benefits of your solution. Like the Fritz robot, what are the, what are the two to three key features of what Fritz robot is doing? 
and why is it helping you? And why three maximum is that if there's a long list, people will not remember anything. If it's really good two or three, they might actually remember what it was about. So try to pick like the really the best benefits, maximum three key benefits from your solution. It might be one that is huge. That's, that's like if there's a, like a one really great benefit, you know, stick with that. It, it is enough. But let's say if you have multiple meaningful benefits, maybe you can have two, two maximum of three benefits that you mention about your solution. So maybe my fridge robots would have, you know, real time information on demand uh, when you are leaving at work, what's in your fridge, what you could do with those. So you can make a decision when you, you go to a store before you pick your kids or with your children, of course. Uh, it gives you recipes about how can you use your few ingredients that you have in your fridge if you decide to skip. Or maybe it already gives me the third option. Uh, normally on Thursdays, you eat uh, mashed potatoes or noodles, and then you can also click order that food for your family when you arrive at home. Maybe those are the three key benefits. But trying to just uh, give you a couple examples, what could be the really core benefits of your solution that you need to mention? The, the, the consumer or the, the audience might not be interested what type of servo motors you are using or what is the machine vision technology in your, uh, your fit robots. That's something that when we go into deep sort of trying to really understand the technology, trying to really, uh, really sort of go to, a, to like an investor or somebody who is thinking about putting a lot of money into your idea, then we go into those very small details. But here we already know, we have seen your robots, we have seen your code really, uh, in this case, uh, the, the presentation and the benefits of your idea and your, of your vision, not all of these need to be currently in your solution, that how it works today. But like, what is your vision about what type of benefits your robot will have in the future when it's ready? Because we already know the technical aspects in a way. So we are going in a reverse order in, a, in, our, in our case here. But yes, but uh, three main maximum benefits. But now, uh, last but not least, uh, but, uh, but this is more, this is the C and this is optional in our case. So the NAB is, is really now the key for our uh, next week's final. But if you have the time, maybe consider also adding a comparison slide. Now, this comparison slide, what it does is that now you have already mentioned the benefits of your robot uh, to, uh, to, to, the, to the customer or the, or the investor or the, in our case, the judges. Now, comparis, comparing your robots helps the listener to understand how you compare to other potential solutions. Uh, and now this just makes their life easier because they don't need to start Googling like, okay, I, I was told about this fridge robot, what, who, which is doing this and this. Okay, are there similar robots there? What are they doing? What are those robots doing? Uh, and uh, are they better than this guy's fridge robot? And, and really, this is just the uh, quality of life slide in, 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 in our case, where you are just telling us, for example, what type of other options there would be to do this. And maybe if you are pitching a product, uh, to a customer or something, you could compare your solution to other available products and describe where you are better uh, and, uh, and why to choose you. Yes, uh, and good reminder. So if you have any questions, please just raise your hand or just type into the chat. But these are the four main components of the presentation. And maybe in this case, I would use maybe maximum of 
three minutes with this. So you have one minute to show your robots and maybe quickly also show your code. It is very fast, but I'm sure that, that we, can, we can do it, especially when we practice. Any questions about the basic structure? Yeah. All right, so let's move forward. Now, this is something I already mentioned. Maybe we can now take this, uh, take, take this and we can basically do ourselves a presentation. So maybe I'll here, I'll write a presentation while we are, while we are doing. It's, let me just uh, open up a new window so I can do a bit of a Google searching on the other screen here. All right, now, something that I already mentioned at the very beginning. So these are just something very general advice. Less is more, two reasons. Uh, people have really hard time following, I mean, there's a lot of information. Maybe this presentation practice is not the best example of less is more, uh, but when you are doing this very short three or five minutes, the less and the more dense the information is, the better. And of course, when you are using your slides, the less words you have on the slides helps the person to basically follow you speaking. At all costs, I would avoid these long wall of text presentations. Because as I mentioned at the beginning, the person can do one thing. If they listen to you, they don't read about your presentation. So they basically lose everything that is on the presentation. Or if they read the presentation, they're not listening to you. So don't put these walls of text that people start reading and then they stop listening to you. Now, something that we were, I already mentioned is that if you have text on your slide and most of us do, and there's nothing wrong with having, a te having text on your slide, but like start from the, from the top. So you have the st same structure when you are talking, what you have on the slide and, and you go step by step. Maybe you even use the appear function in the PowerPoint where every time you say a keyword when you are talking, it appears there. Or you say a sentence that then at the same time appears on the, on the PowerPoint. Or maybe you just have two, three sentences on the PowerPoint and you say the exact words that you have also on the PowerPoint slide. Uh, this, like if you have this on the first slide, uh, then person is already sort of aligned to read at your speed what's what's on the on the on the on the screen and then of course you can add sentences that are not on the screen but this is just helping the uh, the person to follow the flow of your presentation and as mentioned since not everybody here are native english speakers to have text to support the spoken uh, message helps us non native people now, one more thing also is that avoid demonstrations while you are talking, like your first presentation. Of course, like when you put your robot on, on, the, on a table, for example, you can tell what it is doing. Like now the robot is fetching water or now the robot is uh, taking a picture and analyzing it. But if you demonstrate while you are giving a presentation, once more, what happens, people are either looking at the demonstration or listening to you speak. So uh, be careful with the rhythm that, uh, that if you are presenting something or demonstrating something, that you stop the demonstration while you say something. Uh, and then once more, when you are done with what, what you want to say, you put the robot back on. Now, just something that came to my mind is that since we do have this five minutes, please remember that it is not like uh, if you if you go over time or we need to stop you from speaking uh, because you are going over time, 
it's something that will not ruin your competition. I mean, we have already seen the robots, we have seen the code base, we have a really good idea of already what the, what the, what the robots are. Now, I would say that the final most important part is to understand like the idea more, more fully and also be able to ask questions and give you feedback. So now, if you go over time, you miss something that you wanted to say something, or maybe you are uh, a bit uh, stressed, or, or for example, when presenting, don't worry. Uh, if you are a bit bit stressed on the presentation, that doesn't impact like our evaluation, uh, or if there is a typo on the on the proper point, but that's irrelevant irrelevant to us. We just wanna hear from you, presenting in a format that we understand so so we can also hear it from your uh, from your mouth like like what you want to achieve and what you are building yes there was somebody asking for the recording so yes we will get it for you so let's look into uh, my my fridge robots so now what i could like the actual slide what i could have here maybe we do something together so this is the need slide for my, for my robots. Maybe I do it a bit. Of course, please do visual ones. I may have a limited uh, capacity to very visual slides here. Okay, so maybe a, a, a sentence. Have you ever been in a... Oops. Well, I mean, most of you are very young, so maybe uh, this you don't relate this uh, with this very well. But maybe this is just that you coming home, and uh, and you realize that the fridge is empty. So maybe, maybe how I would start this is that hey, my name is Sandri Koivisto. Oh, hmm. Let's do it this way. So just to make this very concrete, maybe this is the first slide. Hey, I'm Santeri Koivisto from Southeastern Finland University of Applied Sciences. So have you ever been in a situation where the fridge is empty and the kids are crying? You just came home, you realize there is no food in the fridge and you have two options. You go to a store with your kids or you order something quite expensive. Uh, from uh, from Foodora or Vault or Zomato, or whatever it might be available to at, the, at your place. Okay, I, I've been there. So this was roughly thirty seconds. Then and by by no means. Uh, this is uh, something that that is like a perfect perfect uh, pitch. So uh, so now, of course, I I trust that you are doing doing better ones than than I am. So maybe I just uh, take something silly here. This came from Google when I googled fish robot. So uh, here it is. Please be introduced to mm -hmm. Fridge Robot. Amazing. Here we have Fridge Robot. I've probably used uh, at this point moment, maybe maybe for, maybe forty seconds or maybe the thirty seconds of my time. So, have you ever been in a situation where you know the fridge is empty, the kids are crying for food? Well, you have your options. You go to the supermarket to find some food, or you buy uh, something or order in something very expensive. Where well, here's a solution for you. Please be introduced to fridge robot. Your go-to robot that helps you on site when you're leaving, leaving work, uh, that what you have in the fri freezer. And uh, well, this was actually a really good, uh, good explanation since uh, I was already going to the benefits side. Uh, 
maybe please be introduced to Fritz Robot, your go-to helper when deciding what you wanna, what you can make for food today. Okay. Once more, not saying this is perfect, but wanted to give you example like how I would do it, <laughs> and uh, and uh, and also exposing myself for this hilarious moment. So just to make you feel like it's not that super serious. Okay, your go go to helper for deciding what you can do for food for for dinner today or it can be of course any meal so this is pretty much what i everything what i'm about to say okay so what does the fridge robot do let's have a benefit slide here so maybe i'll uh, also do this this is slide number one slide number two slide number three Slide number four. Okay. Real time info when you leave from work, what you have in the fridge. Recipes. Uh, uh, in the app directly in the app to help you know what you can do with what you have in the fridge. Okay, maybe not very well uh, written in a, in a PowerPoint slide, but uh, anyways, I'm sure that you sort of get the point. Uh, bullet, bullet option to order food if directly from the app. Uh, maybe this is groceries or uh, deliver. Okay, now my fourth slide, the key benefits of Fridge Robot. You will get real-time info when you live at work, for example, what you have in the fridge, recipes directly in the app to help you to know what you can do with what you have, an option to order food directly from the app, either grocery delivery or delivery food. All right. This took maybe another 30 seconds, maybe 40 seconds. Okay. Then fifth slide. If if I if I want to do it. But comparison, how to compare fridge robots uh, to other options? Well, food delivery uh, apps only offer deliveries. Okay, maybe not the most interesting uh, bullet, but whatever. Uh, but anyways, uh, smart fridges. Uh, I don't know if, if do smart fridges nowadays have a uh, machine vision, machine vision, uh, smart fridge. Let's see if we have it. Uh, Samsung offers something for 3000 euros. Oh, there is uh, something else. Okay. Let's do a bit of a due diligence. Okay, so there is a okay, so now there is a view inside feature in some extremely expensive uh, fridges that you just have a camera of to inside your fridge. Uh, but you, it doesn't tell you what the products are. So my, my fridges only offer images from what's inside your fridge. Uh, and maybe the last comparison could be that um, maybe this is just the conclusion that smart fridge, uh, actually, this should be uh, IoT fridges. Uh, because if I'm using, ah, 
I'm using the word smart uh, fridge robot. So smart. So fridge robot. provides both to ease up your daily life. OK, great. Let's check it from the beginning. So I'm Santeri Koivisto. I come from uh, 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 Southern Eastern University of Applied Sciences. Still struggling with that. Have you ever been in a situation where the fridge is empty, you just entered home, and the kids are craving for food? Please be introduced to Fridge Robot, your go-to helper for deciding what you can do for dinner today. It provides you real-time info, for example, when you leave from work, what you have in the fridge, and recipes directly in the app to help you know what you can do with what you have in the fridge. You have also the option to order food directly from the app, groceries, grocery delivery, or delivery food. Food delivery apps only offer deliveries of various kinds, and smart fridges, traditional ones that are extremely expensive, by the way, only offer images from what's inside your fridge. So what can you do with that information? Well, Fridge Robot provides both to both sets of information, both options, to ease up your day, daily life. So that was about one and a half minutes. So not very long. So I could speak much longer. Hopefully, this sort of frames the different components in a very impromptu mode. So this was all something that I came up on the spot, which of course makes my work in a way easier because I haven't spent hours and hours and hours of working on fridge robots. And of course, when I'm very invested into making something, I wanna tell everything about it. Now I only have an idea. So it was maybe easier to make this small presentation. So it might be more challenging to you, but uh, this was just one example, not necessarily a very good example, but an example to explain one idea of a robot that could help you in the kitchen. What do you think? Did it make sense? Was it like a good presentation or any feedback is welcome? Also critical feedback. No feedback. Well, in Finland, that's normally positive, but I'm not sure how it is with you. So let's then move a bit forward. Now, at the very beginning, I mentioned that we would like to see three things. And why three? If you remember, Let's put it here that the idea presentation. Because one out of three of the evaluation is about the idea. One out of three is uh, one out of three is the is the robot demo, is the structural robot. So we need to see the robot in action. Well, live, let's OK, now this is a bit silly. So live idea presentation. And then show the code running. And once more, that's one out of three. Maybe you can quick explanation. OK, just so we know that it's, it was you and you understand what's happening in the code. So really, these three components should be in the presentation. The fridge robot that I was explaining was about the live idea presentation. So we need that in order to understand what your vision is. Live robot demonstration, of course, is about us seeing that it's your robot and you're running it and we see the structural part. And then finally, show us quickly how the code is running and quick explanation of the code just the main parts. So we understand that you also understand the code. And these three components are the assessment and the evaluation. So 
it's important to see all of those three. We have seen, of course, the code base and the robot, but now we just also want to confirm that it's there with you and you have been building it. So, which robot in action? All right. So now I've spent my maybe two minutes with my idea presentation. And now I want to also show the, the rest. So what, how to do that? Let's uh, have a bit different uh, color scheme. Now, with this first part, I can use PowerPoint. Like, for example, I'm using Miro here. But now, at this moment, maybe there is a transition show the robot. All right. Now, we want to see the fridge robot in action. So maybe if I would be showing the fridge robot, I would first of all show it, of course. Maybe I, I put uh, a, an in ingredient into the fridge, show it up here on the list, on the app, put another one, recipe, how is the, I need to check the recipe. Okay, so uh, yeah, better. <laughs> but uh, but yes. So what I'm trying to show here is that you know I would live present the, my robot. I would, in my case, for example, I could open the open the fridge door, put an ingredient in. It, the machine vision would take a picture, uh, realize what it is. It would appear on my phone. Bling. Maybe. I open it again, put another one, fridge closed, machine vision shows another one, blim, and maybe there are now eggs and bananas. I will show you can make banana pancakes out of eggs and bananas. We sometimes do that as a, a evening snack for the boys because it's very protein and, uh, and uh, fiber rich. So this could be the presentation, like, like the, showing the fridge robot in action. Your robot might be harder to demonstrate like this, but just to give an idea that this is enough for us to see how it works and that you are running it and it's there with you. So no very in-depth explanations are needed. This is in a way already, in my case, uh, it was demonstrated already. But the main point is that here is that make the judge audience how the benefits are delivered. So if I'm claiming that, let's say, it gives me real-time information, well, I could maybe show with the app that, hey, here's the real-time information. Or uh, the re recipes, how that would work out. OK, I would then have a few ingredients there let the machine vision re re recognize them. And then I would have a maybe a small recipe here with me. So I'm just showing like how the benefits are functional with my, with my idea. And here, ultimately, show the back end. So ideally, you would show us the code and show that the code is running while the robot is running. So maybe you have a screen or a laptop with you. A robot is doing something on the table, and the laptop is showing the code running at the same time. So this can be one way of doing it. And I'm sure that here, this is only very short 
Uh, so if uh, let's say we use another another two minutes here, this is only one minute. This one. So two parts basically. You presenting the idea, then showing the robot in action, and finally showing the code in action. You can do some of these at the same time based on your solution based on your equipment, of course. So this structure is not set in stone. You can change this if you like. But this is one very good example how it is very easy for us to understand your solution and the structure and all that. So this is one good example of how you could do it. Now, maybe I'll uh, share this link to the mirror board, by the way, at the same time. Uh, so let me just uh, lock this and then I'll uh, share the one with the link, kind of view, copy board link, and I'll only put it there. So you can you can come and check it out if you want. Maybe I could have done that already earlier, but, uh, but maybe it would have been a bit of a, a bit of a hassle if you would be also scrolling through this but now it's available to you as well okay so any questions about the structure and other things so far maybe you were with us last year this is already a bit of a sort of a repetition for you but uh with presentation with communication you are never perfect you can always practice a bit more always get a bit better and of course, communications are very situational. So, but we can look into a few final things. Or Johanna, do you have something you want to mention? Uh, at this point? Yes, I was about to ask that. Where did you actually put the uh, link to Miro board? Did you uh... actually? Uh, I I I, unforced, uh, I put it somebody as a direct message. So. Yes, I, I think that yes. Can you add it so yes. that everybody can see it? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, another try. Technology is not easy. <laughs> True. <laughs> yes. So, uh, so we yeah. are entering basic, basically the I would say the last stretch of of uh, now the, uh, of the presentation sort of overview. So, uh, if you now it would be a good time to also think about if you have any questions. Uh, so now, whenever it comes to communications and uh, and pitching, presenting, practice is key practice 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 at some point you are so good you don't need to practice anymore that that you are already so good at what you are doing and what you are telling that you don't need to practice but really if you are doing this the first time i cannot address it enough please practice and make sure everything works in five minutes I'm 100% sure that you will also benefit from this practice for the remainder of your life. And, and really the best presenters, really the ones that are excellent at telling their, for example, their products or, or companies or whatever, they are practicing with their, uh, their presentations. They have trainers to help them practice uh, their presentation. So you shouldn't skip it either uh, and, and really when we were for example going into uh, some events when i was uh, running a startup what we were doing we were practicing when we went to the stage we really carefully practiced every slide what we are about to say every sentence we had in our head and we we remember from the memory like like let's say there's a pianist that sits next to a piano doesn't need sheet music, doesn't need the notes, can just play. Very similar to that, we had the notes in our head. We know exactly the sentences, what to say. We remember them from our top of our head. And what this helps you to do is that, let's say you have probably heard this concept of elevator pitch, meaning that you can uh, assure somebody you are doing a great product or great idea or something great during an elevator ride. And that elevator ride can be 30 seconds, literally, or less. So when you practice enough, I mean, not necessarily for this particular uh, show, but of uh, these finals, but like in life, let's say you have something that you are very passionate about, 
and you want to spread that idea. When you practice it enough, you do it enough times, <clears throat> what happens is that people start giving you feedback, of course, based on your practice and based on your, your presentations. You start collecting information. You start learning what goes through. What, what are other people understanding? What do they sort of uh, pick up? How they react? Do they have criticism? Things like this. And step by step from practicing, presenting, pitching, talking, practicing this routine, you start having these extremely condensed and extremely easy to understand sentences that are as described sort of as has uh, like the maximum sort of describing power, uh, lacking of a better word here, uh, to your audience. So really, uh, throughout, let's say, over a year, let's say we started pitching our company idea, uh, like first day of January, one year, one year after, uh, we the, the pitch, we were still pitching the same product, but it has changed due to all of the practice and repetition, and we were constantly getting better and better at it. So, so this is really, really important. So what I would recommend is that uh, you would write the whole thing, what are you about to say, the whole thing that you are, you are saying <clears throat> word by word on a paper just to make sure you don't use time to, mm, you know, like, mm, 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 uh, and sentences that you don't need, that are just like confusing people uh, and adding information that is not relevant for your, your idea. So I would really uh, practice it in a way you write, write everything word by word and you read it out loud. You can well, sometimes do it in a way that everybody writes their own version uh, and then you can compare it in a team and pick the best parts from each team member. Uh, There's a question in the chat. Yes. Uh, what about a feature that we will put in a project in the future, but not now? Please, uh, re uh, please mention that. For example, in the benefits or on the, on, the, on, the, on the features. Yeah, absolutely. We would be very curious to hear that. So you can, you can also just uh, make sure that we understand that these are there now, these features are now in the product or in the, <clears throat> in the solution, and these are coming. Excuse me. Now, going back to the practice. So when you have uh, everything word by word, uh, you know, speak it aloud uh, two or three times, make sure it fits in the five minutes. You can use mirror if you like, uh, just to make you maybe act more uh, maybe this is not for our remote uh, final, but uh, but then let's say you are presenting in front of an audience. Like, how do you how do you move? How do you come closer to the stage, closer to the audience? How do you use nonverbal language to emphasize what's really important? Like, this is really important, and uh, all of this matters. Ne necessarily in the in the remote world that much, uh, but uh, but then when you're doing something live, I would also recommend that if you are presenting something live at your school, for example, you know, use a mirror uh, to just see how you look and that you feel like you are your natural. And <clears throat> if you can, you can remember the whole, whole thing from your memory. This is like when you are a very good level and you are, you like, you really know what you are doing. You know, this is one way. Don't stress about it because, of course, now currently in the remote world, I can have a small note here under the camera, and maybe that helps me to remember. And I can maybe not read out loud like completely, uh, just word by word, but uh, maybe I have my keywords here that I can then use to remember the, 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 the structure that I want to use. So there are some small hacks to do that. But if you are doing something live, let's say you have three minutes, you are live in front of an audience, you don't have a presentation, then I highly recommend that you remember everything word by word in your head. So these are something that of course are very important. So like when you want to emphasize, emphasize something, do you raise your voice or do you lower your voice? And once in a while, when you, like, when you uh, uh, raise your voice, you once more wake up, to, you sort of shake the, the listener a bit, so they once more pay attention. So this intonation is also something that you can practice <clears throat> when, when you have the time. 
And of course, not necessarily when it comes to remote presentations, but very important when it comes to uh, live presentation is to use the nonverbal communication that do you look like like this, that you that you know you had better days, uh, have had better days, or are you like moving? Are you using your hands? Things like this, of course, makes a big difference. And remember that don't only practice the presentation, practice also your robot demo, because uh, you don't want that the robot falls uh, into pieces like when it's time to show the robots. Just uh, like before you start doing the presentation, uh, check that, okay, the demonstration you want to do works out. Then you practice the presentation, practice the demonstration, and I think you are really good to go. Let's say if there is in a situation, because now it is not that, of course, uh, formal in the in the in the finals. Let's say if your your time is your your team name is called and okay, uh, you are next. <clears throat> Great, and something falls apart. Excuse me. At that moment, we can always go to the next one, and you will have time to just make sure everything works. Like it's not like this uh, event where you have one chance and then you will not have another chance. We will give you a, a, an order of where, of which we are presenting. So make sure that you follow like when your time comes and try to make sure that your robot is working. But uh, if in case your robot for whatever reason doesn't work and you need a bit of time to fix something, you know, we can always move you later and you can present later. So. Uh, so it is, it is possible, but of course we try to avoid it because it will just take unnecessary time that is away from our event as a whole. All right. <clears throat> Maybe that's enough information. We have now, I've been now speaking for 70 minutes, which is way more than what you have, but, but really all of this except maybe what is very relevant to this finals, all of this information is meant to be something that is useful in any presentation you are going to be doing in your life. Uh, so hopefully you, you find this helpful in general, but also now specifically for next week's final. So final re reminders, you have five minutes maximum. And during that five minutes, we would like to hear about the idea, see the robot in action and see the code in action. So these three things. Yes, as you can have as many presenters as you like. For example, it can be that one person is telling about the idea, one person shows the robots in action, and one person shows the code in action, as an example. There can be as many presenters. Of course, you can be a big group, but just make sure that, uh, for example, if you have a mic that you are passing to a next one, please use the, the clock just to make sure that you have time for all of the mic changes and all that. Uh, so just keep the five minutes in mind, but you can have as many presenters as you like. Okay, Santari, thank you for all the uh, instructions. And, and this is just to help you to be able to give the presentation in five minutes. But on the other hand, there were a lot of um, there was a lot of information about how to do it. But I think that we can still um, think that you can be a little bit creative too. Mm -hmm. So that's a hard combination, probably. But yeah. yeah. So this is one model that is functional, works well. Uh, but if you come up with something that works better for your your idea. Feel free to, I mean, it, it is, is the five minutes you can use as however you like. Maybe you can tell poems instead of showing your robots, but uh, then unfortunately it might not help you in the, in the final. But we would like to hear some poems as well. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. So <laughs> we, are, we are really looking forward to your your presentations in the final. Yes. And I was thinking about that. Maybe I could share quickly with you the timetable for next Thursday when the finals will be. So uh, hang on a second. Uh, 
just to remind you that how it goes. So uh, actually, yeah, the finals will, will be after one, one week on Thursday, 23rd of March, as you know. And the link is there, it's in your emails and it, it, on the net pages of the, of the competition. So there's basically how it will go. So we will have speeches at the beginning, but this will take maximum half an hour, not, not any more, um, nothing more than 30 minutes. So there will be Santere speaking, and then there's a speech which is still under discussion. And then there will be, will be our vice president of education from Satakunta University of Applied Sciences, Timos, will Timo will have a short speech and then there will be to the uh, president of Xamk University so he will have a have a speech there too and then we are introducing the judges briefly there will be four of of uh, of the judges so two judges in each group so you will be shared in two simultaneously presenting groups so the other group will be in a in another room in, in Zoom with the judges. And uh, yes, then we will have the presentations of the teams. And as, as told earlier, you will be shared into two main groups and uh, five minutes per a team. And then we will have a, an evaluation break. And during that, for the uh, people who are watching the finals, uh, they can listen to the Vietnamese student ambassadors or ambassador from our university. And then there will to be a brief presentation about our universities and Finland. And then before 12 o'clock, finish time. So after a couple of hours, we will be declaring the winners. And we hope that we can have a short comment from the winner team. Nothing, no, no speeches, but just a short comments. And as, as you know, this session will be of course recorded and added to the net pages of the competition. And then um, I will be contacting the winner teams by email uh, about how to get the prize. So uh, this is just to, um, to tell you how, how the Thursday, the final day will go. So totally this will take around two hours, I guess. At least we did it last year this way. So let's hope that this works in the similar way. Uh, but I can add you, I can send you this program of the day by email too, when I will be sending you the recording of, of this training session. So uh, if you have anything in your mind you would like to ask about practical things, you can ask here, or then you have got the robotics email address in your use as well. Yes, there's a question. You know, well, what do you think, Santeri? So uh, any, I mean, even one person, of course, can, can do the presentation. So not, not all the team members need to be presenting. So we, of course, understand if there are other engagements there. <clears throat> mm, but then we have to, um, I guess, have a separate discussion about the certificates, because you will get the certificate uh, of participating in this competition that how to um, <laughs> how to do this then if there will be some um, other representatives, but we can we can manage that, I guess. So yes, it's possible if you all can't participate. Okay, a good question anyway. Mm -hmm. But yeah. yeah, I think we are, I mean, there are chance to uh, ask questions uh, before the final, if there are any, anything that, that uh, you are wondering, then uh, please let us know. Do you do you still have like a Q and A session before uh, before the finals, or is this sort of the last last time? There's this the email address. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is how it it goes, and and you can reach us. We will be reading me and 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 Uni, who is here recording. We will be reading the uh, the uh, Rob, Robo Vietnam um, email. I will just add it into the chat 
box the address. You, I guess you already know that because you have been emailing to that address. But just to uh, remind you, So that's the way to reach us in the best way, if in, in case of any questions or anything happens. So let's hope that, that um, everything goes smoothly, will go smoothly on next Thursday. And uh, now you have got all the instructions about what to do then. And mm -hmm. uh, good luck. For yeah, you. looking forward. Yeah. So... We are really looking forward to your, your presentations and, and there will be some audience online to follow in the finals. All right. So good luck and let us know if there's anything. Yeah. Thank you for participating this. You were, there were, I think, I guess almost all the teams are here we're here today. Thank you very much for being so active. Thank you. See you next week. See you.